Welcome to Books in Sum, your go-to for bite-sized book summaries. Find Your People by Jenny Allen Jenny Allen's book Bite to Allen's Find Your People is a practical and spiritual guide to finding and keeping the deep friendships you crave. Allen argues that the people we need could be just around the corner and that we have the power to find them with a strong sense of commitment and the help of God. She suggests that we spend our evenings and weekends sitting at home either alone or with a small number of roommates or family members, making dinner for just you, buying everything we could possibly need, and spending hours staring into a screen. According to research done by the health insurance company Cigna, more than three in five Americans report being chronically lonely. Allen posits that God can help us find the kind of deep, forever friendship we're geared for. The enemy hates community and seeks to divide people and prevent God's glory from shining through. To find your people, Alan recommends saying a prayer to God and praying to become God's idea of community, deep, intentional, day-in and day-out connection. Alan's five-pronged approach for finding your people, deepening your connections with them, and sticking it out when the going gets rough includes three key steps. Finding your people nearby. Noticing who's already right in front of you. Narrowing the list of five people you can try pursuing deeper relationships with. And taking the initiative in starting a friendship. Jenny Allen was interviewing a friend of hers, Jessica, for a podcast one morning. During the conversation, Jessica asked Allen how she could be a better friend. Allen expected to hear a casual response, like book me more often, or let's set up a weekly phone chat. Instead, she said, you never need anything from me. This response brought tears to Allen's eye, as Jessica was one of her dearest friends and had asked for something Allen wasn't sure she could give. Allen had a hard time being transparent because she felt selfish and needy. This experience caused her to put up walls, just like many of us hide because we've been hurt in the past. To change the rhythm of relationships and help them evolve, be intentional and consistent in initiating contact and conversations. Start by asking more intentional questions, such as what are you longing for, and what is making you anxious. Follow up with a simple I'm sorry or what do you need from me right now. These types of questions will help you move closer to understanding how the person actually feels. Finally, you need to need each other. Alan learned the hard way that the only way to develop true intimacy with other people is by being vulnerable. To be seen, known, and held accountable, you need to risk the pain of being known. To take the conversation deeper and get to that vulnerable place, one thing to try is planning a get-together with a friend where you'll be relatively uninterrupted. When you make the decision to get vulnerable, there's always a chance you'll be hurt, but the alternative is to keep on self-protecting and never truly known. Alan's adopted son, Cooper was born in Rwanda and when she took him back to the village of his birth, surrogate tribal elders took it upon themselves to parent him. Pastor Fred, one of the village elders, pulled Cooper aside and told him he was missing out on a great opportunity to learn about the other children's lives. In Pastor Fred's culture, it's normal for elders to co-parent people's children, and everyone holds each other accountable. Westerners of this generation aren't huge fans of accountability, and with their doctrine of independence, they think they can handle it all on their own. The most important details in this book are that it is important to let other people bother us about how we act and what we do, and that to be sharpened by another person, you need to allow yourself to be sharpened. To pursue this goal, you should identify someone or people who have the wisdom to speak into your life, give explicit permission to them to tell the truth, regularly ask them what areas they see in your life where you need to grow, and hold them accountable to that change. Finally, plan a follow-up meeting and ask the person or people whether you can hold them accountable for anything in return. This can feel invasive at first, but the benefits of sharing outweigh the risks. Finally, you should find your mission together and unite the various facets of your life under a mission that you and your people can fight for. The most important details in this book are that a follower of Jesus has a mission to share the love of God with their people. To do this, they should tell people about their God, choose the cashier instead of the self-checkout lane, fight back against the dominant, individualistic culture, and put family and people back into their rightful place in their life. They should also assess the way they spend their time, subtract time from certain activities or add others, and make time to join a club or a workout class, plan a project to paint someone's room, or start volunteering. Finally, they should give others the benefit of the doubt and not assume that someone has specifically set out to hurt them when they could have simply misunderstood what they did. God built us to be in a close-knit community, where we support and fight relentlessly for one another. To do this, we must follow five simple rules, being in close proximity to one another, going deep, staying accountable, finding a shared mission, and resolving conflict. 
We should also be quick to apologize and take responsibility for hurting the other person and aim to be a peacemaker. In the past, people were forced to resolve conflict because they lived in close proximity, but now it is easier to hide or ghost our friends. We must choose the inconvenience of resolving our conflicts, of staying and doing the work to reap the best parts of our friendships. We hope you found this summary helpful in your listening journey. If you're interested in diving deeper into the topic or getting your hands on the whole book, be sure to check the description below where we've included links to the book and other related products that may be useful to you. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button to stay updated on our latest book summaries. And feel free to leave a comment with any suggestions or requests for books you'd like us to cover. Thanks again for tuning in and happy listening.